Hey everybody, welcome back, Todd here. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Today, we're going to install a set of Harley-Davidson pullback fat risers on my 2021 Harley-Davidson Sport Glide. I'm gonna share with you why I'm putting them on. We'll go ahead and put them on and we'll look at kind of a before and after. And if you're considering putting some pullback risers on your motorcycle, maybe this will help you out. So come on with me and uh, let's get these things installed. So here's a look at the curved pullback fat risers. Again, these are Harley Davidson parts. Here's your number, item number 56269-09. They're $207.95 at the time I'm making this video. I wish I'd have pulled the trigger um, last winter when they were $193, but so be it. Um, I will put a link in the description. So to get ready, I've gone ahead and put the bike up on my motorcycle stand, my motorcycle jack. If you don't have one of these, uh, I'll put a link in the description again and maybe after I'm done I'll cover that because this is absolutely a must-have tool if you're going to work on your bike. You've got to get that thing upright. You can't work on it on the kickstand. So I just lifted it up enough to get it light in the back end but not off the ground. It's nice and stir sturdy. Um, super stable to work on. Okay, let's keep moving. Before I pull the fairing off, I thought I would show you. I've got the Gustafsson 15 inch windshield on my Sport Glide here. And that windshield's pretty wide. Now, they make that little piece here because the windshield comes in contact with the brake reservoir. So, it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, once I put these pullback risers on, it's going to move that away. So, we'll take a good look at just how the, everything's looking now before I put the pullback risers on there. And then we'll do a comparison. We'll look it over good once the risers go on. But that's going to make a big difference for me there. And again, there's a piece in there, a little bit of foam you can see, so that that cable doesn't rub against the windshield. And again, the company supplies that with the windshield, so they're aware of the fact that, you know, that tall windshield like that comes in contact there. Okay, let's pull the fairing off. Some of you may not be familiar with the Sport Glide. It has a quick release fairing that comes right off just like that and turns it into really just a cruiser so okay I'm going to set this aside and we'll come back step one is going to be moving this cable from the front side of the bar the way it is now it comes over the bar and it connects in we're going to need this on the front side. So we're going to drop this pin. There's a little C clamp on the bottom here. We're going to pop that pin out and flip this over and put it back in. I've taken the C clip off of the pin. So that is now out and I'll show you what that clamp looks like or that if you're not familiar that's what the C clamp or crescent clip looks like if you don't have a pair of crescent C clip pliers you're gonna want to get them but that's a bugger to get off of there don't kid yourself so that goes around that little ridge there if you can see it and that's what holds it in. So now that that's off, we can move the cable. Okay, so we've pulled the pin out of there, but in order to get the pressure off of here, 
we're going to have to go down below here and loosen up the clutch cable. Okay, to take the tension off, I'm going to have to loosen to pull this up. So you have to pop this clip, this clamp. Easier said than done. There it is. Set that down. Now you can lift that up like that. Now that we've released the tension, we can pull this out and move this whole thing around. Get it through there. So I'm wanting to come around like this and then go back in where I came from. There we go. Get that through there. Slide the pin back in. All right, now we're coming. Here we go. There we go. All right. Now we can drop our pin back in there. Just gotta get her lined up. Bingo. Pins back in. Okay, so here's the secret. I'll show you. Once you take this red clip out, that can let the slack out. But now to restore the tension back up here, you're wanting to crank that all the way out again. Really crank on it good. Then you put your red clip back in. Goes in from the back side. Once you, again, once you extend that really tighten her up good and poke that in there it locks it down so then we're going to put the sleeve over top so that it restores it covers it up good then we're going to put our clamp back on here we'll be all set if you feel the clutch right now it's perfect it's right back to where it was before Okay, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take off the bars. I've got quarter inch Allen wrench socket. Kind of go slow and go evenly. Okay, I'll pause for a second because I forgot to put some tape on each side here to mark exactly what center is. So I've gone ahead and done that. So when I go to put it back together, I know exactly where I want these things. I mean, you should be able to tell anyhow because you can see inside they've got the grooves, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I've come in here, gone down below, got all my wiring here that comes up through here, and I fed it through because some of it was hanging up on the side of a bolt and what have you. Because you're going to need to buy yourself a little bit more distance here so that when we change these out, you know, it'll, it'll be good. But we're looking good right now. Looking good. Okay. Next step. Let's get these off. Okay. These are going to take a three quarter inch wrench. I've gone ahead and taped everything off.
so that they don't screw anything. I think once you get them going, it can almost be easier to twist the top, hold the bottom. Now you could try to get a ratchet under there, and other people have in other videos I watched. But for me, why well, fight it? I'm just uh, using a wrench and it's working just fine. Just take your time. We're almost off. And there we are. Okay, now come down here. Move my wrench. And then I can safely drop this out the bottom. Get it through without scratching anything. You're going to want to hang on to the washer at the bottom, but you can discard the other thing. I'll go ahead and remove this one and we'll be back. Okay, we've got the bars back and we've got the factory risers off. You can see how that's all waffled up. That's what helps it grab on when you stick them inside the risers. So, okay, the next thing is to get those risers on and the bars back in place. Okay, I showed you the uh, pullback riser parts, so I thought I'd show you the parts that came off the bike. I mean, those, those are your standard two inch risers. That's what comes on your sport glide. And of course, you saw the pullbacks. The center piece there that holds it on is a one piece where the one that goes over top of the pullbacks is one on each side with nothing in the center. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put the new risers back on. I've got the new bolt and the washer that came off of there on there. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit this with some Loctite. I'm going to do a pretty generous portion of blue. The directions say to use red. Well, that's what the directions say, but I can tell you this, the factory bolts that I pulled off there had zero on there. So, blue it is. I don't have any red, or I'd use red. I'm not a anti-conformist. As far as I'm going to be able to go without a wrench, back with my wrench. Keep on trucking. Alright, now that I'm relatively in there. I got them pretty snug, but I'm going to wait until I got everything together to put a final snug on them. Okay, got those two in place. It's time to put the bars in and cap them, but I don't know if you can see that. There's a Harley Davidson emblem on each of them. So that Harley Davidson emblem goes up on the top. So that's what we're going to make sure that we pay attention to. Let's go ahead and set the bars up in place.
Mm. So it really didn't matter too much because my tape is in the wrong place. All right, back in a second. Okay, here's what I've done. I have put the put the top clamps on and I started by taking this particular bolt and putting them in to close it down. You can see the waffling on the bars. So I centered that inside of this. I tightened it up just enough so that it grabs pretty good. Getting this bottom one in is going to be a real bear. You're going to have to use an Allen wrench like this and get it in there and go very, very slow. This would be a spot where having another pair of hands would be phenomenal. I don't have to have that right now, so I'm just going to have to proceed slowly and get a couple of threads going on the bottom, tighten it enough, and then once I get it tightened up enough, I'll be able to roll the bars up and pinch it in place. The bars are on. I'm not going to lie, it was not easy getting the bolts in the bottom here. It's just, it's painful, but you're going to have to take an Allen wrench and take a small one, and you just have to take your time. Now, the directions call for getting your top seam right here tight, no gaps. I've pretty much done that and then they're saying they're showing in their diagram that you will have a bit of a gap at the back end which I do have but there is no way of tightening that down any tighter without snapping something off that's just the way it is um, I set the bars I'm going to go ahead, I'll put the fairing back on it. It's, I've sat on the bike, it certainly makes a big difference. And uh, so I'll go ahead and put the fairing on it. We'll take a look uh, just the way we started out. Okay, there's the bike with the risers changed out. It really moves those uh, handlebars up just a little bit. But man, they're a lot more comfortable. But I wanted to have you just take a look at the bike from, you know, a profile. I think the, the bike looks perfectly balanced now. Frankly, the, the stock bars are just a little bit low. And these really, they make the bike look good. And they certainly perform better for me. Let's take a closer look now. Here we go. You can see, just as I said, with the parts, um, that actually looks nice. But look how much nicer it looks on the inside of the dash or the inside of the fairing. Just It's more relaxed in there. Everything's not just crammed right on top of, you know, up against that fairing. The big noticeable one is, again, with that Gustafsson uh, windshield, You'll remember that right here, it was coming in contact with the brake reservoir. And frankly, that was down further down here because obviously these have been lifted up. But plenty of room now in there with that windshield, nothing hitting at all. And then that cable on the other side is not not touching either. And this is my USB. So you can see that we we rerouted this cable which used to come underneath up and over. Now it's coming underneath down here and looping over. That's what allowed us to put that comfortably on without having to do any recabling whatsoever. Uh, 
I go around front. Here's the look from the front. Now, you can see that those bars are definitely up higher. Okay, I just want to give you a good look. If you're like me, I like to see these things, and so often people go through and talk about them, but they don't show you what it looks like afterwards so I can study it and compare that against mine, you know? Lots of room for my phone, lots of room. Now I even have more room to put some additional accessories on a handlebar if I want to. Okay, hopefully this gives you a good enough look so that, again, if you're considering this, I'm hoping this will help you out. All right, let's do some final thoughts. Some final thoughts on the project. It was really a pretty easy do-it-yourself mod and it made a significant difference on the bike. Something I wish, honestly, I'd have done a little bit sooner, but... You know, I wanted to take my time and make sure I got it right, and I feel like I did that. So um, I'm happy to have the project behind me, and I've ridden the bike a number of times now, and it's just phenomenal. So if you're thinking about this kind of a modification for yourself, I, I would encourage you to do it. Question of whether you have the dealership do it or you do it, really the mod was pretty easy to do. The only Two things, the two most difficult things about this was number one, getting that C-clip off of the pin that holds your clutch cable on. And the other one was getting those Allen wrench, getting that Allen wrench and putting the bottom bolts into uh, the riser clamp. But both of those are easy enough. Other than that, it's easy peasy. So you know, decide for yourself whether you do it or you have the dealership do it or whatever, but it is a pretty easy project. Don't be afraid to tackle it yourself. Um, a, a key here for working on the bike, and I mentioned this earlier, is having some sort of a motorcycle jack uh, to stabilize your bike and get it upright. I said that I would put a link in the description on the one that I use. I'll do that. If you'll stick around right after I wrap this, I'll put a short demo on the one that I'm using. There's plenty of them out there. Regardless of which one you do, I would encourage you, if you don't have one of these for your bike, get one. Um, other than that, that's a wrap for this one, guys. I appreciate you tagging along, as always. Love to hear from you. Again, what did you guys do to your bike? Did you go with the 6-inch? If you did, did that require recabling it? Did you do the four inch? Um, are you comfortable with what you've got? Maybe you did the reach seat. You know, throw a comment in there. I'd love to hear from you guys what you've done. Uh, again, as always, I really appreciate you watching the videos. Do me a favor and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't and you want to see more of these types of videos. And we'll see you on the next one. Here's my LiftMaster motorcycle jack. I told you I'd... Uh, kind of show you what I'm using and uh, got this on Amazon I'll put a link in the description for you uh, here let me show you how to lift the bike so I slid the motorcycle jack underneath the bike and I've got it positioned so then really all I'm going to do is uh, lift it up or start cranking it up and it'll lift the bike off the kickstand and lift it uh, flat Okay, here we go. Just turn it slowly. See, it's already it made contact with the other side. Again, it's on the kickstand. Just nice and easy. Once it starts to come over, let it come over and level up. There. Just like that. Good. Straighten up my front tire. And just like that, she's up on the kickstand.
Okay, you can see it on this side. The bike is sitting nice and square. Couldn't be easier. Okay, like I said, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested, if you don't have one of these. There's a bunch of them on Amazon that are super cheap. Um, this is a little bit more expensive than the cheapest ones, but it's because it's a bigger, the platform is bigger. It's a lift master.